Which smart weighted hula hoop is the best? As you can see here, I have a bunch of different smart hoops. So in this video, I'm gonna do the ultimate smart hoop review and comparison. And I'm gonna look at the differences between many of the smart hoops here. And then I'm gonna let you know by the end of the video, which one I think is best and which ones you may want to avoid because not all the smart hoops you see here are smart hoops I would recommend. Now, before I start comparing these smart hoops, what even makes for a good smart hoop? Some of the factors I will be looking for is, does the smart hoop spin around smoothly? If the ball is constantly catching as it's going around, then that's not a good sign that you got a good smart hoop. Something else I will be looking for is just overall durability. Some smart hoops are much more durable than others. Some are pretty flimsy. Something else I will be looking for is which ones are louder, which ones are quieter. I will be using a decibel meter app on my phone to test the sound, so it'll be interesting to see which one is the quietest. I will also be checking for comfort and overall adjustability, along with looking at other features as well. Also, I weighed each ball on a scale to compare the weights. So this is gonna be an epic comparison with everything that I'm looking at in this video. So I definitely recommend sticking around for the whole video to see which smart hoops perform the best. Also, Swiss Activa, one of the smart hoop brands in this video is the sponsor of this video. But I have freedom to say whatever I want about their hoops in this video. So if their hoops are not the best, I can say their hoops are not the best. Now, since I have so many smart hoops to review and compare in this video, I've decided to split the hoops up into two different groups. The first group that I'm gonna look at are gonna be the smart hoops that don't have counters. And then the second group that I'm gonna look at later on in this video are the smart hoops that do have counters. With that said, let's move on to the smart hoops that don't have counters. Right here, I have eight smart hoops without counters that I'm going to look at. But because there are some here that are just not that great, I'm gonna narrow the field first and get rid of the smart hoops that I wouldn't recommend. First off, this smart hoop right here is garbage. Look at this thing, look how flimsy it is. And look at that, I just ripped it apart essentially by just doing that. So I definitely don't recommend any smart hoop that's like this one. Next up are these two smart hoops right here, the pink and the green one. Something I don't like about these two is the ball is pretty light in comparison to some of the better smart hoops in this video. Also too, I wouldn't say, you know, this is the most durable of smart hoop, though it is more durable than the last one. And the cord length of the ball is not adjustable, and that's a huge red flag. Having an adjustable cord length can be super helpful for beginners or anyone who wants to adjust the intensity of their workouts. Wow, I feel like there are just so many bad hoops out there and there's even more bad hoops with these two right here. Both of these hoops have some of the same problems as the previous hoops. The ball is still under the weight I would like in a smart hoop. Though the ball in the pink hoop is the heaviest so far, but it's definitely not the heaviest in this entire review. Both these hoops are relatively noisy and they don't spin the smoothest either. Partly why I included all these bad smart hoops that I don't recommend in this review is I just wanted to show you that there's some smart hoops out there that have some major deficits. And using smart hoops like these ones here could be the reason why you are unable to successfully spin the ball around. On that note, let's move away from the garbage hoops and actually look at the three finalists without counters in this review. Here are the three finalists. Now both this pink hoop and this blue and white hoop or hoops similar to these hoops have shown up in multiple of my previous videos. So it'll be interesting to see how how these two hoops compared to this purple smart hoop, which is the Swiss Activa S2 XXL hoop. First off, all three of these smart hoops have an adjustable cord length. All three of these hoops have heavier weights, with the pink hoop and the Swiss Activa hoop weighing somewhere around 15 ounces, and this blue and white hoop with the ball weighing at over 12 ounces. These hoops appear to primarily be made of plastic and they seem more durable than many of the smart hoops I showed earlier in this video. Okay, so it looks like we're making some progress here. Now a difference between these hoops is both the blue and white hoop and this pink hoop right here have these little buckles that you can just unbuckle to uh, take the smart hoop apart. Whereas the Swiss Activa smart hoop doesn't have any buckles and you just have to pick a spot on the hoop 
to disconnect the links. I don't feel like this hoop not having buckles is that big of a deal because it wasn't too difficult to get this hoop on and off. In some cases, having buckles on the hoop may be a disadvantage because if you don't buckle those hoops in properly and then you give that ball a spin, there is a chance that the smart hoop could disconnect and then the ball just flies out. Oh, now I don't think that one is fully clipped. Yet. <laughs> so when it comes down to it, having buckles may be an advantage or disadvantage depending on how you look at it. Another big difference in these smart hoops is the flexibility in the body of the hoop. So when I open up the pink hoop, look how far I can bend this hoop. It's pretty similar with the Swiss Activa hoop too. It bends pretty far. And when you have these hoops that are a little bit more flexible like that, uh, they can be much easier to get on. Whereas if you look at this blue and white hoop and then I pull it apart, this is pretty much as far as it will go. So it's not as flexible. Now, just because a hoop is not as flexible, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not as good. I have used some very rigid hoops that aren't as flexible, and sometimes that extra rigidity can make the ball spin around smoother. Now, one of the big complaints out there about smart hoops is the noise. So I wanna go ahead and test these smart hoops and see how loud they are. I do have a decibel meter app on my phone that I will be using to test each smart hoop. As you can see, the Swiss Activa hoop was the quietest hoop of these three right here. It was also the least annoying and most pleasant to listen to out of these three hoops, if I can even use that word. Whereas these two hoops, they, they were a little bit too loud for me, especially this blue and white one. I feel like it's the type of sound that I just really wouldn't want to listen to for an extended period of time. So if you are a person who's more sensitive to noise, then you may not want to get these two smart hoops right here. Now, when it comes to comfort and how it feels wearing the smart hoop on the body, I do feel like the Swiss Activa hoop is the winner for me, partly because if you just look at the differences compared to the pink and the blue and white hoop, the pieces are just much more bulky. And so for me, I just don't really wanna be wearing this big bulky thing around my waist. I prefer having the frame of the hoop smaller and having the weight heavier. Also, a problem with this pink smart hoop right here, when I had this thing on my body, Body and I had the ball spinning around, I noticed that with every spin, the smart hoop itself, the frame of it, was kind of moving with each spin around my belly. Now that's something that's not supposed to happen. And the reason why I bring that up is because I feel like that's an advantage that potentially the Swiss Activa hoop has and this blue and white hoop have, is if you look at the pieces up close, you'll notice that both the blue and white and the Swiss Activa hoop have these little bumps on the inside of each piece. And so that's the part that's going to press up against your body. My theory is that those bumps help to grip to your body, which can possibly keep the smart hoop more in place as you're spinning it. And then if you look at this pink one here, it doesn't have those little bumps. When I just feel that inside piece, it feels much smoother compared to the pieces of the other hoops. I feel like that could be a problem because I don't wanna be spinning the smart hoop around and having the frame of the smart hoop also going around my belly as well. Now it's time to test for smoothness and see which one of these hoops has a smoother spin. Now there is a test that I call the smoothness test that I would like to try on these three hoops. How the smoothness test works, I first get the ball spinning at a reasonable speed. Then I stop moving my body to see how long the ball can glide on its own without my help to make it spin. I will use a stopwatch on my phone to track the glide time of each smart hoop. I'm gonna start out with this pink hoop first. So I'm gonna go ahead, give it a spin. And then once I get it spinning to an average speed, I'm going to stop spinning right now. And now I am counting the glide time with the stopwatch and it stopped. Okay, so it was 5.9 seconds. That was the glide time. Now it's time to test the blue and white hoop. So I'm gonna go ahead, spin that around. So I'm going to start right now. And it is going, it is going and stop. All right, so the glide time for the blue and white hoop was 4.5 seconds. Now it's time to see how this Swiss Activa hoop performs. I'm gonna go ahead and start the test right now. Okay, I'm just gonna let it glide. Let's see how long it goes. 
All right, it's still going. Still going. Stop. Okay, 8.5 seconds. That definitely was better than the other hoops. Now, something I will add, the smoothness test may not always predict how smooth the hoop spins while actually moving your body to make the ball spin, but in the case of these three hoops, Swiss Activa definitely came out on top in this test. But in terms of overall smoothness between these three hoops, I definitely preferred the Swiss Activa over the other two. When I was using this one right here, while it was spinning around, it didn't have the smooth this spin, yet it wasn't the worst spinning either. But then I really started to notice the lack of weight in the ball. So that is something to think about with this hoop. I just, I wanted more weight in the ball. Overall, this hoop is not for me. When it comes to this pink hoop, I felt like it was really crunchy as the ball was spinning around, if that even makes sense. Like uh, with each spin, it would, there would be like this crunch or something that felt the least smooth out of these three. Also too, when using this hoop, I did feel it more in my knees. It felt like there was more pressure in my knees. So that is something else to think about with this smart hoop here. Now, another thing that I really like about the Swiss Activa hoop is that it came with four extra pieces in the box. Now it's time for the big question in the video, which one of these three hoops without counters is the best? Hop down to the comment section and let me know your opinion. In my opinion, I feel like this is an easy question to answer. This Swiss Activa S2 XXL hoop, I feel like is the best. I just feel like it outperformed these two hoops in many ways. And you know, it comes with some great features. In terms of these two hoops, I feel like they're just okay. You know, I don't feel like they're that great, but yeah, I just, I feel like these two hoops are really lacking for me. And I feel like the Swiss Activa hoop here addresses some of the problems that both of these hoops have. And if you are interested in getting the Swiss Activa S2 XXL hoop right here, you can do so by visiting the links in the description of this video. Also, Swiss Activa is the sponsor of this video and they're giving my audience a special discount if you use my coupon codes, which are also located in the description of this video. If you do buy through those links and use my coupon codes, it does help to support this channel. So thank you so much for your support. Now that the best smart hoop without a counter has been determined, I will now be reviewing and comparing pairing these smart hoops that do have counters. Right here, I have 10 counter smart hoops I will be looking at. And if you don't know what a counting smart hoop is, supposedly these hoops are able to count the spins each time the ball spins around. On this side right here, these five smart hoops are the Swiss Activa brand hoops. Now, if you look at these hoops, they may look practically the same from a distance, but all of these hoops are different models and some of them have some major differences. And then on this side, we have the remaining five smart hoops competing against the Swiss Activa brand. So it'll be interesting to see which smart hoops come out on top. Later on in this video, I will let you know which smart hoops I think are the best. To start things out, I'm gonna go ahead and narrow the field here. So let's look at this smart hoop hanging next to me first. First off, this smart hoop right here could potentially be dangerous. I bought a smart hoop that looked a lot like this one from another seller, got the ball spinning really fast, and then all of a sudden one of the pieces broke and then the ball just flung out. And I feel like that is a huge problem. You do not want a smart hoop where the ball is flinging out. Another problem with a smart hoop like this, when I took the counter out of the hoop and I looked at the wheels and the inside of the counter itself, I noticed what appeared to be some very small plastic bits that may have come off the hoop or the counter. The outer part of the wheels appear to be made of plastic, which may be contributing to the plastic shedding that I am finding. Now there's a lot of wheels out there made of plastic and I don't recall any hoop shedding as much plastic as this hoop right here. In terms of the spinning action, you know, it was okay. This hoop was on the louder end for me. And the ball was also not at a weight that I would want in a ball. With that said, this hoop doesn't really do it for me. So let's move on to the next hoop. Okay, so the next hoop I wanna look at is this one right here. Now this hoop has some unique features. The wheels on this hoop appear to be made of metal. Also the pieces of this hoop and the way that you connect them and take them apart is different compared to the other hoops in this review. Also, the counter of this hoop is mounted to the hoop itself versus being on the part that spins around. Now, I have tried other hoops that have counters that look identical to this one right here, and I can't recall any of them working or lasting very long. 
So even though I haven't tested this counter for accuracy, just looking at it, I don't really have much hope of it lasting very long in the future based on my past experiences with counters that look like this one. There is a major problem with this hoop right here. When I was testing this hoop during the smoothness test, where I see how long the ball glides around the hoop on its own without me helping to make it spin, the biggest problem I noticed was the ball would sometimes snag and then it would come back and hit me in the body. And some of those hits were kind of forceful and I feel like that is a huge problem and that's something I don't want in a hoop. Now beyond the smoothness test, when I did get the ball to spin around, it did get smoother. Uh, it did have an okay spin. However, it was on the louder side for me. Overall, with the safety concerns and the problems this hoop has, I just can't recommend a hoop like this. This hoop is not for me. Now moving on to this blue hoop right here. Now, uh, this blue hoop is very similar to the pink hoop that I reviewed earlier in this video. The biggest difference is this hoop has a counter. Now, unfortunately, this blue hoop has a lot of the same problems as the pink hoop. So I'm not gonna go into much detail about this hoop and there's just better hoops in this video. Now, probably one of the most surprising hoops in this entire video is this one right here. I mean, if you look at this thing, it looks like a hoop that was made in the 80s. What was really surprising about this is just how loud it was because when I tested it for sound, This was the quietest hoop in this entire review. One of the reasons why this hoop spun so quietly is because if you look at the wheels, they appear to be rubber wheels. And the smart hoops that have rubber wheels tend to be quieter. But here's the thing about this, something that's really disappointing is just the weight of the ball. I think it's under 11 ounces and it's just not heavy enough. You know, when I spin this thing around, I feel like I'm having to really, really work to make up for that lack of weight in the ball. And also too, the cord length is adjustable. However, it doesn't go out as far as I would like it to go in a smart hoop. So that's also another problem. Now, one of the qualms I have about this hoop, when it comes to the sound test, is it really fair to compare this lighter weight hoop to the hoops with heavier weights in this video? For me, the lack of weight in the ball and the other problems that this hoop has cancels out the benefit of this hoop being on the quieter side. Now, there was only one other hoop in this entire review to post a decibel reading under 67. That hoop just happens to be one of the heavier weight hoops in this review with a ball weight over 15 ounces. I will get to that hoop later on in this video. Now, the next hoop I wanna look at is this hoop right here. This is an interesting specimen. I feel like it spun around fairly smooth. Now, something I like about this hoop, it was on the quieter side. It did pretty well in the noise test. Another neat feature about this hoop, it's fairly easy to open up. And then just look how flexible the body of the hoop is. You know, I'd say that's some decent flexibility right there. Even though there are some pluses with this hoop, this hoop does have some major flaws. The first one here is the weight. The weight itself is on the lighter end. It weighed in at under 11 ounces. Now, when looking at the weight up close, it does have this black circle right here where it looks like a cork. And I tried to pull that cork out because I thought, oh, I wonder if you can put more sand into this ball to make it weigh more. But it looks like the, that black cork isn't really coming out. Now, here's the thing, and this is something that I recommend to everybody out there who gets a smart hoop, is for something like this, I don't recommend putting more sand in the ball or getting any smart hoop where you have to fill it with your own weights. Because here's the problem with this right here. What if I put too much sand in the ball and then it exceeds the amount of weight that this hoop could hold and then it flies off? So that is a safety concern. And speaking of which, when I observed this same model of hoop being used, the ball did fling off from the hoop. And the wild thing about it is what ended up happening was the cord disconnected from the tip of the counter piece and flew off the hoop. And then I went ahead and opened up the counter and just noticed the cord doesn't really connect well to the counter piece. And so that is a safety concern with this hoop right here. And like I said, the ball is already on the lighter side. This is just not a hoop that I can really get behind. It's really unfortunate because there's been a number of hoops so far in this video that do have some nice features 
but then they have this catastrophic deal breaker that I just feel like wrecks the whole hoop. Time out, I'll get back to the video in just a moment here. I just wanna take a moment to acknowledge I'm approaching my year anniversary of being diagnosed with cancer. I'm currently on chemotherapy. So it just really means so much to me that you're tuning in to watch these videos. Something that this has taught me is just life is so unpredictable and it can be so short and you just don't even know it. And so I feel like you just, you know, you just have to follow your dreams, you know, what, what you want in life. And you know, something that I want for this channel and a dream that I have is to reach 100,000 subscribers. And I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel and you know, like this video, comment on this video, whatever to support this channel, I would absolutely love it. And you would be helping me to fulfill one of my dreams in life. So thank you so much for your support. Now back to the video. Now I wanna focus on the Swiss Activa hoops right here. Something that I like about all these hoops is the ball weights. You know, I feel like the weight is on the heavier end when compared to some of the lighter weight hoops in this review. And that's something I really like because I'm finding that the, the weight of the ball is really important and can impact the spin as the ball goes around. And I like that all these hoops give you the option to adjust the cord length, which is really nice. Now I wanna look at these hoops individually and compare them to each other. So the first model right here I wanna look at is the Swiss Activa S5. This hoop right here doesn't have any special buckles. You just have to pick a spot on the hoop, press the button in, and then you can pull the hoop apart. When I pull this hoop apart here, this is about as far as I can bend the pieces. So this hoop right here is definitely more on the rigid side. Now having a more rigid hoop frame isn't necessarily a bad thing. Some of the smoother spinning hoops I've ever tried are more on the rigid side. Now, if you do end up getting a hoop that's more on the rigid side like this one, right here. I don't recommend bending your hoop super far just to get the hoop on your body. Instead, what I recommend doing is take a few pieces off your hoop first so that it makes a bigger entryway into the hoop, then put your hoop on, then take the pieces you took off, put them back on the hoop, and then you can start your workout. And then when you're done with your workout, do the same thing. Take another few pieces off the hoop, and then it makes it easier to get out of the hoop. The key here is to help preserve the life of your hoop. Don't bend the hoop in ways that it shouldn't be bent. Don't go beyond the max bend of your hoop. Okay, so that was more of a tip for hoops in general. In terms of the spinning action on the S5 here, once you get the ball going around, I'd say that the spin is fairly smooth. Also, this hoop was more complicated to put together. It took longer to build than the other hoops that I've used. Now, once the hoop is fully assembled, something I did notice about this hoop is you really have to make sure that those buttons that lock the pieces together click into place. Because if you don't hear that click and that button isn't fully locked into place, there is a chance that the ball could come off the hoop. Some of these buttons I noticed at times can be a little bit sticky. And what I mean by that is uh, sometimes if I push it down, it doesn't come up right away. So, you know, maybe I kind of have to jiggle the pieces a little bit, then the piece pops out. So just wanted to put that out there about the buttons. Now, something else I noticed about the Swiss Activa S5, when I was wearing this hoop lower on my body and I was spinning the ball around, it did feel more uncomfortable wearing the hoop lower. Also too, later on, I did notice some marks and possible bruises on my body as well. Now, when wearing the hoop higher on my body, I don't recall feeling as much discomfort. Now here's the thing, just because I felt that wearing the S5 lower on my body was more uncomfortable, it doesn't mean that others may experience the same thing as me. Also too, for anyone who gets any kind of smart hoop, you may wanna consider getting some type of waist pad to wear under your hoop. Sometimes just having that can make the experience feel more comfortable, and in some cases, for some people, prevent marks and bruising occurring on the body. Now something else about the S5, it was a little bit louder for me it did test on the noisier side. Now, if you're not a fan of the noise in the S5, Swiss Activa did release quieter versions of the S5 in these two hoops right here. This hoop right here is the S5S model. Basically, this hoop has the exact same frame as the S5 here, and the counters are very similar. The main difference in the counter is this one appears to have rubber wheels, and this one appears to have plastic wheels. Having the rubber wheels on the counter helps to reduce the noise when spinning the ball around this hoop. 
Another version of the S5 is this hoop right here, which is the S5S Plus. So this hoop also has the same hoop frame as the S5. But if you look at the counter here, it is different. The numbers on this counter light up and it's also USB rechargeable. This counter also appears to have rubber around the wheels too. So this hoop does spin quieter than the S5 here. Overall, the S5 series here, I feel like these three hoops are not bad hoops at all. And I feel like they would beat out a lot of the hoops in this review. Now we are moving on to the final two hoops in this review, these two hoops right here. This is the Swiss Activa S4S model. And then this is the Swiss Activa S6 Plus model. Both these hoops have similarities to the Swiss Activa S5, but they also have some differences too. Starting off with this hoop right here, the S4S, this hoop performed well in the sound test. Now I will say some of the S4S sound tests were all over the place with the lowest score being a 66.7 decibel average and the highest score being a 70.4 decibel average. This hoop did test as the quietest hoop among the hoops with a ball weight greater than 10.7 ounces in this review. That's a huge deal because in all the hoops I tested in this video, my top hoops all had heavier weights weighing at least 15 ounces. I'm not a big fan of the hoops that have a much lighter ball weight. So it's nice to come across a hoop that does have a heavier weight and also spins on the quieter side as well. Now for me personally, I like to have a hoop that registers under 80 decibels for noise, partly because when I was doing the sound tests in this review, something I noticed for the hoops that started to go above that 80 decibel mark is when I was talking to the camera and using the hoop at the same time, I felt myself having to elevate my voice more. And I feel like that's a concern because let's say if I use a smart hoop and I do do this with a friend or something, I don't wanna have to feel like I'm starting to yell just to talk to my friend while I'm using my hoop. So definitely the quiet feature in this hoop is a plus and the counter appears to have rubber wheels. In terms of the spinning action of the S4S hoop, this hoop got smoother the faster the ball was spinning, with the ball spinning very smoothly at higher speeds. While at the other end, smoothness diminished in this hoop the slower the ball was spinning around. So that is a complaint that I have about this hoop, is this hoop just losing smoothness the slower it spins. But here's the thing, when I did get this hoop spinning at a fast enough pace, this hoop spun very smoothly, and it was probably one of the smoother spinning hoops in this entire review. But in order to achieve that level of smoothness, I did have to crank up the speed when spinning the ball around. Now where the S4S is similar to the Swiss Activa S5, it also has buttons around the hoop. So you just find a spot on the hoop, and you press the button and then you pull it apart. This hoop is also more on the rigid side. This is about as far as I can pull this hoop apart. Now, when it comes to the Swiss Activa S6 Plus here, it too is also like the S5 and the S4S. You just find a button on the hoop and then you pull it apart. This hoop here is also more rigid. As you can see here, this is about as far as I can pull this hoop apart. Now, here's the thing about the S6 Plus. This hoop is the smoothest hoop I have ever used. It beats out all the other hoops in this review. When that ball is spinning around, it just spins like butter. Even though this hoop appears to have plastic wheels, this hoop spins on the quieter side. So that's something else that I like about the S6 Plus too. Now, where both of these hoops differ from the S5 hoops that I showed earlier is uh, definitely if you look at the pieces, you know, the pieces are different from the S5. And also too, I don't feel like both of these hoops were as complicated to put together. And I do like the button action better on the S4S and the S6 Plus when compared to the S5. In terms of comfort, so far, both of these hoops feel okay to wear. Though I do feel like I may benefit from doing some more testing with these hoops to determine just how comfortable these hoops are in different situations. Now, in terms of 
of the counters. Here's an up close look at the different Swiss Active counters. The biggest noticeable difference here is the S6 Plus and the S5 S Plus both have counters where the screen lights up and they are USB rechargeable, whereas the other counters here don't have those features. Now, one thing I will note, the first day I opened up the box to the Swiss Activa S6 Plus right here and I tried it out, I did notice that one of the pieces, the locking mechanism on the piece, part of it was broken. Now, in my case, Swiss Activa did send me extra pieces for the S6 Plus, so I wasn't in need of a replacement piece. Now it's time to determine which smart hoops with counters are the best in this review. All of the smart hoops you see here are my top picks with counters. All of these hoops are Swiss Activa hoops, starting with this one right here, the S5S Plus. This is the S5S hoop. This is the S4S, and then this is the S6 Plus. In terms of my standards for picking the top counter smart hoops, I didn't select hoops that had a much lighter ball weight. All the hoops you see here have a weight that's on the heavier side. I also didn't pick hoops that were on the louder side that tested over 80 decibels in the sound test. I also didn't select hoops that appeared to have some safety concerns, along with other factors I may consider that make for a bad smart hoop. Now, in terms of the smart hoop I think is the best among these four hoops right here, then I would give that honor to the Swiss Activa S6 Plus right here. I do feel like this was the best counter smart hoop in this review. Now, if you are interested in getting any Swiss Activa hoop, you can do so by clicking the links in the description of this video. Swiss Activa is the sponsor of this video and they are giving my audience a special discount. The coupon codes are also in the description. And if you use those coupon codes, it does help to support this channel and it also helps to fund me financially. And with the current health situation I'm in, I do feel more limited in what I can do for work right now. So if you do end up buying through those links and you use the coupon codes, I just really want to thank you right now. Thank you so much for supporting me and this channel. Like it really means a lot. Now a big question, where does the Swiss Activa S2 XXL hoop rank among the top smart hoops? Now if I did have to rank these five hoops in order, starting out with the S5S Plus, the S5S, and then also the S4S hoop right here, I feel like any of these three hoops right here could make a case for the third best hoop among these five. So in terms of ranking the fifth, fourth, and third best hoop, I'm gonna leave that up to the audience. Hop down to the comment section and let me know how you think these hoops should be ranked in order. In terms of the second best hoop, I feel like that honor goes to the Swiss Activa S2 XXL hoop right here. I feel like this hoop performed well overall. I like that this hoop comes with extra pieces. I like the ease of use of this hoop. The number one spot in this review for me goes to the Swiss Activa S6 Plus right here. I just really like that this hoop spun so smoothly. So this is my number one hoop in this review. The hoop that you do decide to get may be based off of personal preferences. Do you want something that's more quiet? Do you want something that spins smoother? What are you looking for? The key thing to think about here is the best hoop is going to be the hoop that you use the most. If you end up getting a cheap smart hoop where the cord length isn't adjustable or the ball is on the lighter side or when you spin the ball around, it constantly is catching and it's not very smooth or the hoop is just not very comfortable to wear, how can you be successful if you get a smart hoop like that. Even though I've posted so many videos on how to use your smart hoop, I can only teach someone so much if you get a bad hoop. I just don't recommend buying hoops that are substandard, like some of the hoops I reviewed earlier in this video. In some cases, it's the hoop itself that will determine whether you will be successful or not. And just as a reminder, if you are interested in getting my top recommended smart hoops, visit the links and use the coupon codes in the description of this video. Now that I've revealed my top smart hoops in this entire review, I want to get into some of the more nitty gritty details about some of these hoops right here and look at some of the differences and things that I feel like may be important that you should know. So with that said, let's get into it. Starting off, I want to see how big each one of these hoops gets. I assembled each hoop with all the pieces that it came with. Then I'm going to take a tape measure and measure the width of each hoop just to see how big each hoop is. When measuring the inside diameter of the S4 hoop, it comes to about 14 and a half inches or almost 37 centimeters. The diameter measurement for the S6 Plus is very similar to the S4S hoop. It came in at about 14 and a half inches. Though I will say the inside bumps protruding from the hoop may take a little bit off that measurement. The inside diameter of the S2 XXL hoop came in at around 17 inches 
or at around 43 to 44 centimeters. So definitely the S2 XXL hoop is the biggest hoop out of these three right here. If you do need extra pieces beyond what you see here in these hoops, Swiss Activa does sell extra pieces. I will put a link in the description of this video to get extra pieces if you need them. Also, the tape measure that I used to measure these hoops right here came inside the box with my Swiss Activa hoop. So I feel like this is a really nice accessory to have, especially if you are using your hoop for weight loss and you wanna track your progress, being able to take your measurements may be a key component to that. Also, I wanna know which smart hoop do you think is the best? What things do you look for in a smart hoop? Please hop down to the comment section and let me know. Also, I just wanna be clear, even if Swiss Activa wasn't the sponsor of this video, these smart hoops right here would still be my top smart hoops that I would recommend. Now, something that the S4S model has that the other Swiss Activa counter hoops don't have is if you look at the pieces up close here, you'll notice that the S4S here in between the pieces, the gap is much smaller compared to the other counter Swiss Activa hoops. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because let's say if you're wearing a piece of clothing, something that is more on the baggier side and you're going to be spinning your hoop, the smaller the gap is between each piece, the less likely a piece of clothing is gonna get into that gap and possibly come in contact with the counter as it spins around the hoop. So that is a benefit to the S4S here to have that smaller gap between each piece so that clothing doesn't get inside there to make contact with the counter as it spins around. But here's the thing, the issue with clothing possibly creeping up through the gaps of the hoop may not even be a problem at all if you wear the right kind of clothing. When it comes to clothing, I don't care what type of smart hoop or weighted hula hoop a person uses. Uses, I don't recommend wearing baggy clothes or just looser clothing. Instead, I recommend wearing clothes that are more form-fitting or possibly wearing some type of waist pad underneath your hoop. So something I wanna put out there, I did not test any of the counters in this video for accuracy. I also didn't really look at all of their functions. Some counters do more than just counting the spins as the ball goes around. Like some of them may also be a timer. Some of them may also count calories maybe even more things. Though I am a little suspicious about the ones that count calories because how can you count calories if you don't, let's say, have someone's heart rate or something like that. But anyways, I just wanna put that out there about my lack of testing with the counters. But if I did have to pick a counter based off of just looking at it, then I would definitely choose the Swiss Act of a counter with the bigger light up numbers and USB rechargeability. Now, if you did miss parts of this review, I did add timestamps if you need to go back and re-watch some things. I do want to give a big thanks to Swiss Activa for sponsoring this video. And if you want to buy any of the Swiss Activa hoops, visit the links in the description of this video. And you'll also see the coupon codes there to get a discount off your hoop. And if you found this video to be helpful and you like that I got so detailed and provided so much information and you think this information will be helpful to other people, please subscribe to my channel channel. The more subscribes I get, it tells me that I'm doing something right and that I should continue making videos in the future. Now, if you are looking to use your smart weighted hula hoop for weight loss, or you want some smart weighted hula hoop workout tips for beginners, or you just want to learn how to use your smart weighted hula hoop, I recommend watching some of the videos appearing on the screen right now or checking out the video links that I put in the description of this video. So thank you everyone for watching. Until next time, enjoy.